In this video, we're gonna learn how to make some vector textures in After Effects. So what do I mean by that? Well, it's gonna look a little something like this. We're gonna be making textures 100% inside the program. So we're gonna have a lot of control over how these things look. We're going to be able to make textures that look in a lot of different ways. Maybe you want some scratches or maybe you want to make some kind of uh, beat up grids or maybe you just want to make weird stuff that looks crazy over your footage. You can do whatever you want and so maybe these aren't technically vectors. We can scale them up really big and at some point you know they're going to get blurry but it's close enough for the sake of this video. We aren't gonna be linking out to textures outside of the program, so you don't have to worry about missing footage or any of that nonsense. And the major bonus is we can save these textures as presets and reuse them again in the future. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm in After Effects with just a piece of footage that I wanna put some texture on. And whatever this footage is, it does not matter because we're just gonna put some texture over top. It's gonna be procedural and it's gonna be great. So I'm just gonna drag this footage down into a new comp so we can start fresh. All right, and so then what I'm gonna do is create a new layer, a new solid color, does not matter. I'm gonna call this scratches make it the comp size, and all right. So now the first thing we wanna to add to this is going to be a fractal noise, okay? So the fractal noise is basically going to drive this whole effect. So we have all of these different fractal types to choose from. They're all gonna give us a different look for this. So for this example, maybe we wanna go for something that is gonna look like scratches. So I'm gonna choose, how about swirly? Okay, and we can leave the noise type as soft linear. I think this looks fine. If we chose something like blocks, you know, this is gonna maybe give us a more kind of digital look. Could be cool, it's not right for this, okay? So let's at soft linear. And what we wanna do is we wanna crank this contrast up real high, okay? Maybe I'm gonna bring it up real high, like the high 300s. So we're just getting like, little tiny traces of this of the black values coming through these are going to be the scratches of the texture okay and i'll you know just bring the brightness up a little bit more so we're just really kind of getting nothing let me bring my resolution up so you can see a little bit better okay something like this you can just barely see the texture the more black that comes through the more of the that you're gonna be able to see. So you want this to kind of be subtle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twirl down this evolution option here and I'm gonna put a little expression on this random seed by alt clicking on it and let's type time times any number. I will do six and see how this looks. The higher the number, the faster this will cycle through uh, random seeds, the lower the number, the slower. I like the way six looks. I think this gives this a nice um, speed, a nice vibe. Okay, so now what we could do is we could just um, change the blending mode of this. Um, and I like to cycle through these by clicking shift and plus or shift and shift and minus to go back and forth. And you can just kind of see how this would look um, with different, different blending modes right off the bat. So maybe you could just put it on like a multiply and you'll just get kind of how this would look. If it was um, black on top, but um, let's go back to normal and let's actually, instead of put a blending mode on it, let's actually just remove uh, all the white values from this or all the black values from this. So we could do that by adding a shift channels on to this layer, okay? So you can either double click or just drag it onto that. And so then what we're gonna say is we're gonna take alpha from luminance, okay? If you look really close, what happened is that it just pulled out all of the black values here, it made that part transparent. You can see that part of my video is playing through anywhere that was black. So then what we wanna do is we wanna actually say, let's reverse that. So I'm just gonna click invert up here. And now we've inverted this. If I take off the shift channels for a second, we're just inverting this layer. 
So let's go ahead and invert that. And now we have we've just shifted everything. And now we're, we're only seeing this little scratch texture on top. And now I don't really love how um, it's kind of having like this white in the middle and then darker edges. So I'm just gonna add a little fill on top. So let's add this fill effect and maybe change the color to be black. And now this will just kind of give us a more even filling or even color coating around the whole texture. I just like the way that looks a little bit more. That's a preference thing. All right, so now we have this really nice kind of scratchy texture. And then from here, I'll just cycle through the blending modes until I get something that I like, okay? So this is really whatever you want. Maybe that kind of overlay, that's kind of cool. That plays off the, co the underlying color a little bit more. We have a really nice uh, scratch texture. And then you could just kind of play with the contrast and the brightness from here and make it as subtle or as dark as you like. So like that, it's really nice. So I'm gonna save this one and let's just go ahead and let me make a new solid and let's try to make a different style. Let's try to make a grid, a cool grid paper texture. So I'll hide my scratches and now from here, I'm going to add a grid, okay? We're gonna generate a grid, all right? Now this is what we got already. Very cool, love a nice grid. I'm gonna change the size from width and height sliders. And then you can just make this size kind of whatever you want, whatever feels good. Maybe I'll do 150, 150, give it a nice square like that. Maybe I wanna bring the border down a little bit. So it's like two pixels, but not too thick. Now we wanna move this grid around, okay? Instead of doing it on this anchor point, I'm just gonna add a transform effect here. Double click on that. And I'm gonna alt click on the position here and just add a little expression by typing wiggle with these parentheses open and let's say three, nine, three comma 100. So that will say three times per second, it's gonna wiggle 100 pixels. That will look something like that. Now, I don't just love the way that this is wiggling around. We want that really kind of shaky texture like our last texture had, right? We want that shakiness. So let's add a little expression above the wiggle. Let me bring this up so you can see it a little bit better. Click enter, add another line to this, and we're gonna say, posterize time, okay? With these open parentheses. And then let, we can add a number in here and that's going to make the frame rate of this that number. So let's say six, we'll try that out. And then you gotta add a little colon to end that line, semicolon. And then it'll look something like that. That's cool, I like that. That looks a lot better to me. All right, great. And now maybe we also wanna um, copy this expression and add it to the rotation. So we get a little shake there too. Like that could be cool. We get something like that. This feels a lot more random that way. I like it. And then I'll probably just scale this up so that we don't get any edges here. All right, we don't see any missing edges. And I can, now my grid's looking a little too big. I'll just resize the grid. That's really good. All right, cool. Now, the one thing about this grid is like, it's a little too even, right? I wanna beat it up a little bit, right? Looks too even on here, it doesn't feel right. So why don't we go back and just add a fractal noise onto this, onto the grid. Let me search for a fractal noise, drag it on here. And then if we bring the fractal noise above our transform, and really kind of bump this contrast up so it's you're getting a lot of variation in the white and black values let me just kind of crank this stuff up now what what will happen if we change this blending mode here cycle through a little bit and i want it to be white instead of black now we're just going to kind of get this little beat up grid that's going to happen here right so that's pretty cool I like that. And you know, fractal noise is pretty much always gonna be the driver of this. So if we just make any kind of solid and add a fractal noise to it, right? We just kind of play with the, the contrast here and 
let's say, add some evolution. So in this case, let me just add some uh, time expression, time times like 350 to this, um, the evolution of this and just have this evolving cloud. We can get a lot of interesting textures this way. So let me just go ahead and add something like a mosaic to this, right? And let's say I just want to have all vertical blocks stacked like this and really kind of uh, bright and a lot of contrast. And then we just play with some kind of blending mode over top like this, turn off my grid. You can start to get some really kind of just uh, interesting dancing line textures that happen up over top. So just play with fractal noise and other effects on top to be the driver of your textures. So that's really it. A little, a quick little tip on making procedural textures. Hope you learned something cool and useful today. Thank you for watching my YouTube video. If you liked it, you're probably gonna like these. But check them out, all right? I'll wait. <laughs>